Welcome to my uh, epilogue, I guess, to my Pantheon series. This episode is just going to be reading all the lore books I accumulated over the uh, playthrough, and I'm pretty sure I got all the books that had quartz, uh, you know, chiseled quartz on top, and if I missed one, it's only because, like, well, there was that one that was blocked off at the end of, uh, whatchamacallit, Misty Deep, and yeah, just others that I might have just, you know, overlooked or not found at all. But I'm pretty sure I got most of them. I got almost a full inventory of the things. Like, maybe you're supposed to have a full inventory, and that's supposed to be a thing, but eh, I, I bet it's, it's not really, like, an objective or an official, like, goal for the maps, and, and I'm pretty sure there, it was pretty arbitrary to put them in anyway. But, uh, yeah, let's get this going, and uh, if you don't want to, you know, trudge through this whole episode, feel free to, you know, just go watch something else, I guess. Yeah, this is for, I guess, the lower nerds, nerds uh, for Pantheon, I guess. But, uh, yeah, tomorrow will be an actual CTM LP. You're probably going to play, like, the Chimerian Memories number three. Probably, totally not, because of the, the map maker is suggesting it in the comments. That's not good. No, that's not, a, that's not why. I just want to play the map. <clears throat> anyway, let's uh, get this going. I'm going to start off with the first maps that I'm pretty sure I got. Uh, these I've kind of already read earlier in the series, but I'm going to go across this like that. And I'm pretty sure I got most of these in the right order. But there may be a few like in this uh, bit that are a bit out of order, but uh, hopefully they make sense. All right. Some consider the Titans and the gods one and the same, but the truth is much deeper than that. The gods, of which there are 16 commonly recognized within the Pantheon, are beings of immense power worshipped by many but loved by few. Fighting is natural to them, and they reign over aspects of the world that controls the very ebb and flow of life itself. Uh, pay no attention to the airplane in the background, not sure if they'll be on the microphone. Often unkind, on rare occasions they may grant a human a boon. Titans, on the other hand, are a different story. Large and violent, they have been locked away for millennia by the gods. The familiar relation between the two is deeply unclear, but the titans reign over primal elements in a different way than the gods. The titans remain locked away in prisons scattered across the world, sealed by the power of the gods. If they were ever to be free, the gods, and maybe even the world, may not survive their wrath. And of course, at the end of the map, you get that, uh, you, you've unlocked the titans and whatever, when you place the black wall, so that's that. And I should probably read the title. So that was Of Gods and Titans. This is Of Men and Scribes. The relationship between mortal men and the gods have been, has long been a turbulent one. Men do not like to be controlled, but those of higher power do not desire to be fought, fought against. As such, men has, have long been servants of these beings. We, the scribes of the Pantheon's server, to catalog and track the Pantheon and their efforts to control and gain power. As such, they tolerate our existence. We exist because they desire it, but we serve to enlighten others to the strength and power of the Pantheon and its efforts to keep th this world safe from the Titans. I'll just point out the uh, typo. Pretty sure that's supposed to be an E right there, not an A. Yeah. <clears throat> Only the gods, and by association the scribes, may ever know where the Titans are locked away. Only the gods and the scribes thusly know how to awaken them. Alright, in death. We belong here now. Kerblau, the god of the underworld, is on the hunt. The other scribes are gone. I'm the last still free, but they will, will find me. We have done wrong. We cannot be called the scribes of the pantheon any longer. We have abandoned the gods. For that, we are all doomed. If you are reading this, you are a scribe in training. You will have found this note after awakening in the mists of the underworld. But you live. It is on you. You must appease the gods. Find each of the offerings to the gods, 16 in total, to truly create p peace. Also find the 12 musical discs and the two flowers of life and death. Find them and be free. We have done wrong. We deserve to die. Okay. The Pathways. The Pathways are ancient hidden routes through the world, created thousands of years ago by the conscriptors, high-ranking scribes. These pathways are commonly known as intersections and serve to connect the realms controlled by the gods. I've made some minor adjustments to these pathways to get you closer to where one can find the offerings to the gods. They will be well defended, but far more possible to reach than if one entered these realms from the edges. Into Silence Time to Slide is the god of silence, the whispers sneaking through your skull, seeding fear into your mind as you sleep. He guards those who value silence like the inhabitants of his forest home. However, the trees are not natural christened terror trees. They are the result of horrible experimentation. The trees suck nutrients from the soil to give life and power to the denizens within. 
the four gods that make up the first intersection work closely together, while the Guardian just watches time to slide Axe, removing all hope for his sorry targets. Do not cross him, he offers a fate worse than death. I believe that was for the Virulent Grove, so this is for... No, no, that was from... Yeah, yeah, that's from Virulent Grove. This is from uh, Corrupt Gatria, so it's called Too Draining. The corruption spreads through this throughout the peaceful land. Ruled by the god of darkness, the Gatria has slowly become corrupted by, by close proximity to Time to Slide's realm. The trees suck nutrients not only from the ground, but from the air itself. Xero Thomas sits at the top of the, his tower, watching it through his, the dense clouds, smiling. To you. I'm not sure where this is supposed to be. Uh, I apologize to you, Acolyte. I have not been quite truthful with you. You see, we scribes did not share the information about the Titan's locations with others, you see. We did worse than that. The gods wish me dead and have slaughtered the others, Acolyte, for our sins. You deserve to know the truth of what we did, and then you may decide if my life deserves saving. I, I cannot say it. Please just find more of the offerings. I will explain it all soon. I need time, you understand, right? I will contact you soon, scribe in training. Okay, what lies below? Skyreach towers over the city of Sapphire. Lightning strikes each night at midnight as if by clockwork. This is not random. This is the sign of Zap, the god of lightning, his sign of travel. Skyreach stretches up into the sky, but it was not intended to be a skyscraper. Skyreach is a ladder for the gods. For Skyreach only towers in, in the sky so that what lurks below wouldn't be found. An offering to the gods. And the betrayal. Yeah, this is for Misty Deep, I guess, huh? Lugi's decisions are the cause of all the, this suffering. These deaths have been handled far better than they should have by those who called Misty Deep home. But Lugi is unlike the others. He is no god. He is a titan. Allying with the gods over his brothers in arms, Lugi took on the aspect of betrayal, earning himself a spot in the pantheon, but the eternal enmity of the titans. Not that he, he would have anything to worry about normally, the titans are locked away, slumbering in an artificial sleep. But things are changing. The scribes are dying. Nothing's as it seems. Okay, let's put away this uh, first set of books and meow by order, I guess. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Once I'm done reading these, I'll be done reading them, I guess. His shift click works like that. Okay. Oh, all these beast books. <laughs> Alright, so a brief history. Let us talk about history, scribe. I feel it may be necessary to understand. In the beginning, there was nothing but dust. This dust gathered and formed a body. Then two. And then these two were the first titans. As more titans were born from oblivion, the worlds were formed. From the titans were born the gods, and soon the war began. As begin beings of the worlds were battered by this war, one titan stepped forward to end it all. That titan was Lugi. Turning on his titan brothers, Lugi joined the side of, of the gods and was instrumental in locking away of the titans. It was he that created the chains, and he that created the keys. In the end, however, he didn't join us. I'm sure you, you're wondering why the gods are hunting the scribes, and why this world has fallen so. The scribes have opened the titans' prisons. They are not free, not yet, but the gods needed a wake-up call. They have become complacent. They had begun to squabble internally, and we found that no matter how we tried, we were unable to stop this. So we hunted down the prisons of the titans and threw open the gates. Now it is on you, scribe, to make the offerings to the gods and show them the error of their ways. Lugi is coming, run. And starting the beast books. The noises of the angry machines roared around the two men, huddled over a small, dimly lit glass screen. Strange numbers and letters on a thin screen font slipped across the screen at an incredibly rapid rate pace, and the men, one thin and wiry, the other more muscular, watched with rapt attention. The thin man was perched upon a black rolling chair, while the other was peering heavily over his shoulder, hovering almost like a wasp. As the two men peered, the room began to feel almost darker, a, th a, a the myriad of screens spread throughout the room began to turn off one by one. Neither man took their eyes from the whirring screen, neither man made a single hint of sound. Their eyes flew across the screen, absorbing in the characters and immediately discarding what they did not need. Number two. Then the thin man's hand whipped forward and jabbed his index finger joints. He, he jabbed his index finger joints, cracking slight, slightly into the screen. It froze. Letters and numbers playing across it. The muscular man spoke slowly, br breath ba baited, and his voice cracked mid-sentence, enlarged the central cor cores. The screen leapt to respond, and the central characters flying forward. The green glare of the screens 
screen bathed the men's faces in a sickening glow. Then two men turned their heads towards the other and spoke as if one. The beast has awoken. Is it just me or this beast story has like nothing to do with the scribe and titans and what not? Maybe I'll find out later, I don't know. No sooner had their words left their mouth than that, that final screen flickered, flickered to black and the noises of the hungry machines that once roared around them settled into a deafening silence. The room descended into darkness. A slight cl click fill, filled the room, and a small flame appeared on the hands of the muscle-lined man, holding a small flint and tinder uh, and a torch aloft. As the noise of the click faded into nothingness, a new clicking began to approach. Mere moments later, Noel. The door to the room slid open, and a man stepped in. Is this Noel supposed to be there, or is it supposed to be like... <laughs> eh text here that didn't make it into 1.8 or something. Huh. Number four. Without a word, the man's presence was terrifying. His eyes seemed to blaze in the darkness, pick, picking up every scrap of light and letting it burn within his retina. Who had released the beast? His words rung through the room, filling each and every corner and crevice bit before settling into nothingness again. Neither of the two men spoke. The imposing man took another step forward. I said, who ha- <laughs> released the beast into the facility? The thin man inhaled, closing it, closed his eyes, and replied, The beast has awoken itself. It has invaded the machine. It has invaded the Nexus, my lord. The imposing man's eyes closed briefly before he spoke. Come with me, quickly. This section is not safe. The two researchers scurried to attention and followed their lord out into the claustrophobic halls. And as they moved, machines seemed to roar once more, but it sounded more natural, more primal. The beast was on the prowl, and there was naught their lord could do. They exited the maze of dark, of dark metal halls and entered a wide, dimly lit dome. It branched into several different paths, and the thin man traced, traces the names with his eyes as he passed. One particular sign caught his eye, as it always did, reflecting down upon his face. Necrology. Lord Thad, he began to say, but a scream, loud, high-pitched, and absolutely blood-curling, filled the halls, echoing from the depths of necrology. The Lord turned to the thin man, Garfield, take Shenrin to the misty deep and flee. It is no longer safe here. Number seven, Garfield gazed back at his Lord, eyes beginning to shine with the slightest of tears. But what will you do? I shall stand and call the others. We will need them more than ever. When, sir, Shen Shenrin growled from a position slightly behind Garfield. As soon as you are gone, I do not wish to harm you. Now go and escape this place. I shall protect what is mine, and the others shall hunt down the beast once and for all. Garfield nodded and men men motioned to Shen Rear. thought it was Shen Rin or something. Both strode quickly to a rook and selected a metallic sword. They strode into the darkness of one of the passages as the Lord watched. And last beast, one... The man waited until his lackeys had faded into the, the darkness, and then began to speak words that twisted through the aether as if they were not words, but living beings. As he spoke, symbols began to shape in the air before him, each a color of their own. Blues and greens, red and yellows, darks and lights. My brothers, the Lord spoke as slowly the f figures of fifteen other men formed into a circle around him. The time has come. We must defend the factory. The beast is loose. Prepare yourselves. Then, Van, the man in the middle, smiled as a light gray formed around his hand. What? For we are the Pantheon and know not limits. Defend what is ours. Kill the Woken Titan. The beast shall not escape this place. Behind him, screams echoed from necrology again, and he grimaced. Our time is now. Do not let the scribe's actions ruin us. We must fight. We must win. Okay. Quite an odd little story from the beast area, the belly of the beast area. OCD. Keep them in order. Ah. Alright. Hopefully this episode doesn't get too long. I might want to cut out like the beast story if, if, if it gets too long, but eh, we'll see. Divine Dust, I believe is next. Uh, not sure though. This land is chaos. They call it the Colossus, but the reason is quite different than what you might expect. Yes, the land see leading to the temple is massive, but the real reason is something kept far more secret. The Colossus Deverentum is the first place in the world. The place is teeming with divi divine dust. As such, the below the Temple of the Moon, the first Titan was born. It was here as well that the conscriptors of the scribes first spoke to, to the Titans. 
It was here we decided to try to free them. But this is Amelon's lands. You will succeed, though. The scribes are behind you, even in death. Make your offerings free me. Okay, the altars. Welcome to the Monument to the Gods. Within the sacred structure lies the altars at which you can offer 33 different sacrifices to the gods. These being the 16 wool, 3 metal blocks, 12 records, and 2 sacred flowers. To fully complete the map, find and sacrifice all 33 items. One of the record altars was creeping us out though, so it's been moved. I trust it's not too hard to find. I wish you speed on your travels. Please complete the monument and appease the gods before the destruction once again rains from the skies. These are dark times. Okay. Conscriptor Tepethys Log. Conscriptor Tepethys Log, entry 526. I found them, the ones before the gods. Dylan and I have long theorized their existence, but here at last definitive proof. On Epsilon's visit to De Deverantum today, we uncovered a layer of earth below the temple on the west of the desert. The twisting pathways le led us down to a damp environment covered with ice, ringed by magma, holding a cage of mysterious properties. We scattered the area for godly presences, but we found something larger, a clay colossus of impressive proportions. They looked like the gods in our literature, but something was off. I went into the cage of obsidian and discovered a disc sitting inside the, the chest upon the pedestal. I reached in and felt a prick on my finger. Instantly, the world dissolved into nothing, into a dream state which remains in my mind even now. So this is this lore book I found in the, be the belly of the beast area, I think. Mortals. A booming voice echoed through the room, and the Grand Colossus spoke. I remember you mortals defending us in centuries past. The gods, the gods. They have taken you, haven't they? What is your purpose to be in the dangerous danger of the gods' realm, away from your safety in Crete? I looked around, searching for the source of the voice. A response sprung forth in my mind, and suddenly I found those thoughts voiced aloud. We are scribes aided by the gods to discover the lands that mortals cannot. We give them information at the risk of our lives, to benefit our humankind. Then tell who are you. It took a while for a response to a reply to issue forth. I am a titan. Okay. It is no god. I found something. This being seems to control the dead, not just raise it. It's like nothing else. Texts call this being the Pamelok. How it came to be here, though, I am not sure. Conscriptor records indicate the pa Palamok is from from a faraway land, but somehow the curator has been has brought it here, and instead of guarding his key, the curator just vanished. I don't like this at all. The Palamok, get out of there now! I've learned the truth while you were bum bumbling around the tower. The Palamok Palamok is not a being; it's a title, a title passed down by whomever defeats the previous one. Avoid the throne; it will corrupt you. So some of these might be out of order, by the way. Just I didn't have them in the chest in order, but uh, we'll see. Quiet little scribe, I don't need your blabbing about silly creations and stupid keys. I need to speak with the acolyte alone. Hello, welcome to my realm. I see you're after my key. Unfortunately, I can't make it that easy for you. Sorry. I'm the curator, Fangride. I own this place. The nesting grounds, they call it. Funny little place where memories go. I know, it doesn't look so friendly, and really it's not. But what do you expect? This place houses the memories of any living being out there. Did the scribes wonder how we knew of their little betrayal? Did Rock not think I knew of his, of his contact with Tep Tepthis? That poor Titan. I know all. I'll be seeing much more of you later, Acolyte. Have fun out there. It won't be easy, I promise. Okay. Me. You. You are interesting. You live many lives. I've seen your death too many times to count. What are you? Why do you seek my key? Do you know your fate, scribes? Fly! The sky is deadly. The earth is deadly. Is there anywhere safe from us for a scribe anymore? They are cl closing in on me, and I must flee. We must speak again, as I have something I must confess. Now is not the time, though. Now you must fly. And no longer. Even I do not dare travel here. The dormant mines are not so dormant now that the god of nature stirs. Beware of this place and what it holds. Okay, like a lot of those books were out of order, but oh well, they didn't really go in order for any, any reason, I don't think. I'm pretty sure these are, like, ish order. Uh, I think. Alright. Last five. Hang in there. <coughs> is this what he has been doing? The custodian has always been known as the one to curate and clean up after the other gods. But the trash, has it been going back into this? These egg sacks. What are inside them? 
Well, apparently just a bunch of lava, so it's like, eh, nothing. <coughs> truth and lies. I mean, truths and lies. He knows. Zekadj knows. You need to know, too. I'm sorry, scribe. You are not what I told you. Your goal was a lie. You are not seeking offerings. Not really. You are seeking keys. The monument to the god was pretty well defended, don't you think? It's not really a monument. It is a seal. Remember how I mentioned that we opened the doors of the of the prison to the titans were locked in but we were unable to free them the monument is the seal gather the keys break the locks free the titans even in death the scribes are not done you are evidence of this you're a nobody a scribe in training too young and too inexperienced to be as, of use but we needed someone i heard Zekaj. he saw them the scribes are in you death isn't death for you is it you scream out in pain and then your eyes flicker open within you are the scribes protecting you I'm sorry I lied. You had to make the journey. You have to free the Titans. It could save the world itself. It could stop... <coughs> stop what? No. Laugh. When the gods war, man suffers. When man wars, the gods laugh. And they always laugh. So, gods never war? Huh. The final stretch. Don't mess it up now. The final stretch is ahead of you. Amlop and Vex, the god of misfortune and the, pa and the patriarch, lie ahead. They are the almost symbiotic. The two work very closely together. They will show no mercy. I await hidden for your return with the final keys. If you can complete the monument, at least perhaps, I can be free. If you can complete the monument, at least, they shall be free. Okay, a shortness of dust, the last book. There's one last thing to discuss, Acolyte, here at the end of things. You stand before the realm of Vex, the patriarch, the first of the gods, the first of the traitors to the titans. The gods did not fight or the titans for nothing. They didn't do it for anger either, nor did they do it for revenge. Power did not matter. Life did. The divine dust of the world is running short. Divinity could see an end. The gods saw a chance and removed the titans, other beings who consumed dust for their divinity. By waking the titans and working with them, we can cleanse the world of divine dust. With their help, we can destroy divinity. Now overcome your final challenge, defeat the patriarch, and claim the key. Start the revolt. End divinity. Free my soul. I'm, I'm counting on you. We all are. Revolt. Ah, let's get into that Titans Revolt lore as soon as that comes out in two years. <coughs> well, phooey. Anyway, well, I hope you enjoyed the uh, lore of Pantheon. I'm, I, I hope that was all, if at least most of it. Uh, did they post like all the lore on the forums? I'm not sure if they did, but if they did, I might want to check on that and like <laughs> see if I missed anything. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll uh, uh, see you next time for the next CTMLP.